This is the MRTV review of the Mirage camera, all in 3D, coming up. Yeah, hi and welcome here to MRTV. My name is Sebastian Ang, and if this is your first time here, and if you're just as excited about VR and AR as I am, then subscribe now and click on the bell button so you don't miss anything. Yes, so this is the 3D review of the Mirage camera, 3D, 180 degrees camera. So if you're watching this now, in 2D on your computer or on your mobile phone, then stop, stop it, download the YouTube app from Steam or download the YouTube VR app from the Daydream store and watch this in 3D and 180 degrees because, well, this video review is actually made with the Mirage camera, with the exact camera that I'm reviewing here in this video. So stop it now and download the YouTube app from Steam or from the Daydream store. All right. Hope that now you're back here in 3D on my little terrace in Germany and enjoy this in 3D, my first 3D review. So I cannot show you the camera, I can only show you the box here because, well, the camera is now recording this. But let me tell you what is this. So this is a snap and shoot camera that you can buy for $299. And well, it is a 3D camera, so it has two lenses, it has two fisheye lenses here. So, in order to record stereoscopic 3D video and pictures. Now, let's talk about the specs of this camera. Well, it is a snap and shoot. It has 16 gigabyte of memory built in, but it also has a card slot, so you can simply expand the memory and you can have a maximum of 128 gigabyte with micro SD card. Then, the two fisheye lenses both have 13 megapixels and they can record 4K, 1440p and 1080p at 30 frames per second. And what you can see here right now, this is 4K video at 30 frames per second. Then we have dual microphones, so you also have a spatial sound here. And the device has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. It only weighs 139 grams and it comes with two batteries and a pouch. All right, great. So these are the specs. Before I go deeper into the review, I would like, for, for reasons of full disclosure, I would like to tell you that Lenovo has sent me this camera free of charge. However, that does not influence my review at all. And you will see that in this review. So I will tell you the good parts, but for sure, I will also tell you the bad parts. And unfortunately, there are some. And I'm not going to skip them, <laughs> as you know. All right, so one of these bad things is also the reason why I'm not editing this video, why I have to do everything in one cut now, because you cannot edit the videos yet. There is no application that would allow you to edit the videos or do any kind of post-processing. And unfortunately, even if you, if you load the video into Adobe Premiere or any other um, any other application for video editing. You can edit, but you can export it in the same format because that is a special Google format. It's called VRMP4 and it's this 3D 180 degrees format that is compatible with YouTube, yes, and Google Photos app and it, it shows this here, right? But it is not yet compatible with something like Adobe Premiere. So you cannot edit it. That's why everything now for this review, I have to do it in one take. So excuse me if there will be a little slip up sometimes or anything like that. Okay. Anyway, so what can you do with it? You can take photos, you can take video, and you can also live stream, but more to that later. Now, the interesting part, of course, as you can tell right now, it's 3D. Right? So you can take 3D photos and you can take 3D videos. And let me show you how interesting that looks. So that is pretty wild, right? So yes, you really, really have that 3D effect if you watch the videos in your daydream um, headset or in your PC VR headset once you downloaded the YouTube VR app. So 
That 3D effect is pretty, pretty nice. So I really like the 3D effect. It is something totally new and for sure this is going to be, uh, this is just the beginning of something very, very exciting. Yeah, so how does it work? Um, the camera is a very, very simple camera. Look, it looks like this. And actually on the back side of the device, normally you would expect to have a screen, right? An LCD screen, but this camera does not have a screen. So this, you will have to, um, yeah, you have to connect with your camera using the companion app. You can download the companion app and then, I'm not sure if you can tell right now, you, you get some, um, some kind of preview on your phone and well, if you wanna see the videos or the pictures, if you wanna have some preview, then you need your phone, you need the companion app in order to, yeah, to check the videos and the pictures and probably you wanna delete one. Everything only works on the phone. So you need the phone if you want to look at the footage, if you wanna make decisions of if you wanna keep a video or photo or not. So, in my opinion, that is a bit complicated. I don't, I don't always want to handle two devices, right? So, in my opinion, for the price of $299, it would have been nicer if I wouldn't need to bring my phone if I want to look at what's in the camera. So, no LCD screen. That is a bit unfortunate for the price of $299. However, the camera is really, really simple to use. So it is, it is like a very small camera. Actually, this size is the actual size. So it is, it, is, it is much smaller than a phone. This is my Pixel 2 XL. So it is very small. You can easily put it into your pocket and it is very simple to use. So it has uh, one shutter button, then it has one little button to turn on the camera and it has one more button which is the function button where you simply click and change the functions. So you can change between video and photo. <laughs> and that is really it. So then you click on the shutter button to take a photo or you click to the shutter button to start the video and you click again to stop the video. So it's really, really simple. You can give this to your, to your grandmom and she could probably do a, do a video or a picture. I'll probably give, better give it to your mom. <laughs> So it is, it is very, very simple to use and it's very, very simple to take a picture and to take a video. But unfortunately, now I've been using it for a couple of weeks and it came to my attention that um, there is one LED around the shutter button which, which glows bluish, but in the direct sunlight you can hardly see it. So unfortunately, sometimes I was wondering, hey, did I already start the video? And I didn't really have, have any kind of feedback because in the bright sunlight, I could hardly see those LED buttons. And I would really have hoped for a nice LCD display in the back that would show me, yes, you're recording, you have so and so many minutes left. And I don't really always want to look at my phone and have the camera in the other hand. So this is really something that I personally don't like about this camera, that you have to have your companion phone. I mean, even though we carry the phone with us all the time, but it would have been nicer to have everything in one device. So that's that. So yeah, but because there's this function button on the camera, you can also bring the camera, just the camera and take photos and videos with it without the companion app. But if you wanna look at the, the stuff, then indeed you will need the companion app. All right, so now how to watch the footage in 3D? Well, so first of all, you can have a look at the footage that you recorded on your phone. And if you like one of those pictures or videos, then you can click on download and then the, the picture will be downloaded to your phone. And if you have the Google Photos app, it will be synchronized with your Google Photos. Now, if you have a Daydream headset, a Daydream VR headset, like the Lenovo Mirage Solo, then you can directly watch the videos or the pictures 
in the virtual reality headset because it's going to be synced over the cloud. Yeah, that's the magic of Google, right? Because, well, the Daydream headsets, they have the Google Photos app and that is really cool. So yes, if you are in the Daydream um, walled garden, I can say so now, then it is really, really comfortable. You just snap pictures, you just take videos, you download it, you download the ones that you like to your phone by clicking one button and it will be synchronized to the cloud and then you simply put on your Daydream headset or you simply put your phone into your Daydream viewer and everything works fine and you can see the, the pictures and the videos in beautiful 3D. And I, let me tell you now about the quality. The pictures really look nice. They look fantastic in 3D. The, the 3D effect is just as good as here in the video. So it is a big difference to take 3D videos as compared to normal videos. And it's a big difference to take 3D pictures as compared to normal pictures. So that is really nice. Also as compared to these 360 degrees cameras like, like uh, the Gear 360 from Samsung that do not shoot in 3D. It is a huge difference. So it is, this camera has 180 degrees, so you can see everything in front of you, just like you see me now. And you see like uh, that I should uh, cut the lawn here, cut, cut this grass, yeah. So you can see everything. And the same with the photos, it's the same 180 degrees. And it's just like you really capture what you see in glorious 3D. And that is really incredible. I went on a small vacation to Barcelona recently. I brought the camera. And I took fantastic pictures of La Sagrada Familia, of this beautiful church, and of the beach. And it is really, really nice to re-watch this in, in the virtual reality headset, in the Mirage Solo, or on the phone. It is really, really nice. So, um, definitely, if you are in that daydream ecosystem, it is nice. But you can also, of course, you can... You can transfer the videos and pictures to your computer or you can just take out the SD card if, if, you have, if you bought an extra SD card and well transfer everything to your computer and then for example you can transfer the videos and the pictures to your Oculus Go and watch, watch the videos there and it looks also really really nice. Now. Now, what you might want to do, you might want to upload the videos to YouTube for everyone to see. Just like I do it right now. And yeah, also that works nice. It works really well because, well, people can watch the videos in 2D. So probably you're watching this right now in 2D and it works. But people can also watch it in 3D. Hopefully you're doing that now. Hopefully you're making, you're um, really um, taking advantage of having this footage now so you can see what kind of videos this camera can take. So um, yeah, you can upload it to YouTube and people can watch it with the YouTube app that you have to get from Steam or with the YouTube app for Daydream headsets. Unfortunately, you cannot watch this with the Oculus Go in the browser. If you use the Oculus Go and point the browser to YouTube, you can see this is a 3D video, but it will be distorted and it will look completely strange. So if you have the Oculus Go, you need to download the videos and put them onto, um, onto the Oculus Go with the cable and then you can also watch them. But it's, uh, yeah, it's a bit complicated. And um, yeah, for the photos though, for the photos though, I have not really found a good solution to see them outside of the Google Photos app. So unfortunately, it is not so compatible and it, unfortunately this time it feels like Google has this walled garden around their VR offerings, which is honestly speaking a shame for a company that wants to be totally different than Apple in their approach, right? So I really hope that the Google Photos app will be available for the Oculus Go as well soon. I really hope that the YouTube app will be available for the Oculus Go soon because, well, it's simple, simply a very popular device, right? And people would enjoy the Mirage camera so much more if, if people who have the Oculus Go can also watch the videos and the, the pictures, the 3D pictures more easily. Yes, so, so that's it, that's it. So 
Now let's talk about the video. So for, for photos, let me tell you, I'm blown away. I love it. It's totally worth it to take beautiful pictures in 3D. It's probably one of the best ways now to take 3D, easily to take 3D pictures with this camera. And for this, you got my thumbs up, you gotta go. But unfortunately for the videos, I must tell you, I was not so happy about it. First of all, in the very beginning, I had a huge problem with the sync issue. So the audio and the video is not really synced. Yeah, you can probably have a look now at my lips. Is it perfectly synced? Probably not. But I can tell you a couple of weeks ago, when I just got the device, it was even worse. It was nearly unusable. And if I had made a video review at that time, I would have told you do not get the camera at all cost. Because for $299, you expect the camera to do videos that are synced with your audio, right? So I didn't do that review at that time. I thought, okay, give it a bit more chance, really do an in-depth in -depth usage. And now, after a couple of firmware updates, it seems to be a bit better. So, well, you can see it now, right? It is probably acceptable, more acceptable than it was a couple of weeks ago, but it's still not perfectly synced. And that part I'm simply not so happy about if I want to use the camera for professional, um, yeah, for, for, for professional usage, like I do it right now. So for that, I expect it to be perfectly synced. Now, if you have watched the tested review of this device, they just mention it in, in, like a, in the end and they say like, oh yeah, you know what, no problem, just change it in post. But I gotta tell you guys, that is not true. You cannot simply sync it up in post. I try to do that in Adobe Premiere and of course I could sync the audio but the problem is then you cannot export the video in the same format. So it's, you cannot edit it. You cannot, you cannot sync it up perfectly and then edit it in the, uh, export it in the same format in the same VR MP4 for, format which is this 3D 180 degrees format. Adobe Premiere doesn't have it. The other, um, the other video editing software also doesn't have it. You cannot edit the videos right now. And that's also why I do this whole review in one take. That's why everything is just as if it was live. <laughs> it also has some charm to it, but I'm telling you, if I wanna make professional videos, I would really like to edit them, right? So at the moment, you cannot edit the videos. They are not perfectly synced. And um, yeah, also I found the camera is overall a bit dark. However, you can, you can do some adjustments in the software, so that is probably okay. Then about the live streaming feature. Yes, you can live stream with this camera and I've tried it. However, I came across the problem that I could not live stream to all my channels. I could live stream to, to the non-branded channels, like the ones that have my name on it, but to the channels that are like branded, like for example, MRTV, um, to those I could not stream and of course that is a big problem for me because well I wanted to live stream to my channel right to my branded MRTV channel and not to my private Sebastian Ang channel right so that is hopefully something that Google can take care of in the future yeah I think I have covered most of it so um for $299, I believe it's a bit on the expensive side because, well, as where the hardware is concerned, I don't believe it's so expensive, right? It's two fisheye lenses. There's no LCD screen. We have a Bluetooth module and a Wi-Fi module inside. We have a battery. Yeah, probably that cost them to produce $50. So I believe the $299 price tag is a bit on the expensive side, especially taking into consideration that you can really edit the videos. But if you want to take 3D photos, then probably that might be worth it for you because, well, the 3D photos are really nice. And actually, well, the, the 3D videos are also kind of cool. So it really depends on what kind of person you are. Do you want to have the perfect product for $299? Then I would say no then do not go for it because it simply has too many flaws, especially the sync problem is a problem. You cannot edit the videos at the moment. We're still waiting for that software that allows us to edit it. And 
you have to couple your phone to it. It could be better. For $299, it could be better. So if the price goes down to, let's say, $199, it would be much more forgivable. And also, um, once we have a software to edit the videos, and once the sync problem is solved, then, then I could recommend it. For now, if you want to get it now, well, you are an early adopter. You are the first person that can make 3D videos like me now. Um, but well, yes, we are very early in this technology. This is very promising, as you can tell, right? It is kind of cool. It is very, very promising, but we are very, very early in that stage. And for sure, the next iterations will be much, much better. So yes, if you're an early adopter, if you want to have the latest, coolest gadget stuff, and if you can live with that little problems, then it's fine for all the others. Probably wait for one more generation. All right, that's everything I got for this 3D video review, the first 3D video review here on MRTV. I really hope that you enjoyed it. If yes, give it a thumbs up. If you have any more questions, please post them in the comment section below or much better. Why don't you go to the MRTV Discord server where you can chat with me and the MRTV community and you can do so simply by clicking on the link in the description below. But that's everything that I got for you. If you have not subscribed to this channel, please do so now. And I'm looking forward to see you in the next episode. And now I have to find the button to stop it. Bye.